Hi, I'm going to share some of my favorite SEO tools. Now, the reason these tools are useful, in my opinion, is because they can help you better understand your audience. Uh, and if you can do that, then you can better plan your content strategy. And if your content is more engaging with your audience, then that is naturally going to improve your SEO. Um, and the best thing of all is all these tools are absolutely free of charge to use. So the first one we're going to look at is Google Trends. Now, Google Trends is an incredible tool. There's so much data in there. What it helps you to do is compare search volumes of different search terms going back over quite a period of time using Google data. Um, but not only compare different search terms, you can also um, spot seasonal or topical spikes and trends in, in search activity. And you can also maybe spot emerging rising search terms that you haven't thought about targeting yet. So I'm a bit of a foodie, and so I thought I would look at some search activity around some quite common foodie search terms. So we're going to start with pulled pork. So it's become almost ubiquitous pulled pork. And you can see on the graph here that um, over the last five years, it's definitely grown in popularity of people searching for that term. But over the last year, it's maybe started to level out and decline a little bit. So what could it have been replaced by? So then I decided to have a look at kale. Um, kale, again, has become really popular all over Instagram, obviously a lot healthier than pulled pork. And you can see from the kale data overlaid here that uh, we see really specific spikes around January, which is obviously the new year, new you, healthy eating type uh, trend happening. Um, and particularly, you know, kale building up over the last 12 months. So then I thought again about healthy eating, are there any other foods that could be uh, emerging or growing in popularity? And we've looked at good old avocado. So you've probably all seen the pictures of smashed avocado on CD bread all over uh, Instagram again. Well, you can see here that the search activity around avocado has grown massively in the last 12 months and actually surpassed kale. Um, and again, you can see that real spike around a January time for healthy eating. But it's not all about healthy, don't worry, because Prosecco, as you can see here, absolutely smashes the rest out of the ballpark, especially at December. You can see the huge increase in the last couple of years of search activity around Prosecco, which may be a, is reassuring for all of us. So the next tool I want to show you is called Copyscape. Now, Copyscape uh, will help you identify duplicate content from your website that is appearing on other websites across the internet. Why should we care about duplicate, duplicate content? Because generally speaking, search engines like Google really don't like duplicate content. Um, it confuses them and it can in some ways sort of count against your own website. So how does Copyscape work? Well, I just took uh, the URL of a book page uh, from the Waterstones website for a JK Rowling book and punched that into Copyscape. And you can see here, it starts to bring up examples of other websites which closely match the content of my original page. And you can see they're all on different websites. And as you can see, the list carries on all on completely different websites, but all with exactly the same uh, chunks of boilerplate text around this particular book. Now, this could potentially cause confusion for Google. Who, who got there first? Who has the most authoritative version of this product description? And it's a really common issue that a lot of e-commerce websites find with product data and product information. So what you would do in this case is use the data you've got from Copyscape to diagnose this problem and then maybe go and work on your own product descriptions to make them more unique to try and stand out and you know, win in, in search results a bit better. So that's Copyscape, a really helpful tool and completely free of charge again. So the last tool I want to show you is Facebook Insights. Now this is a really great way that you can uh, analyze data around your target audience uh, and identify demographics and also things that interest your audience. Now this is helpful for SEO because if you can make your content and your website more engaging by sharing common interests with your target segments, then your website's more likely to get shared, liked and linked to, which will all boost your overall SEO. So how can you use Facebook Insights? Well, there's two main ways really. Uh, the first one is to create a Facebook Ads account, grab the retargeting pixel that Facebook give you and deploy that on your website. That will sit in the background and collect data about your website visitors who are also Facebook users. And the, most, the vast majority of your visitors will be on Facebook. 
So then you can target that audience and analyze it using Facebook Insights and access all kinds of demographic data about the gender split and the age profiles and where they live and, crucially, the things they're interested in. Another way to use it is to actually take your own email data that you might be sitting on, his historic data of people who've bought from your website possibly, upload that as a custom audience into Facebook ads, and then you can analyze that audience and you can compare it to your website visitors and see if there's any key differences amongst the people who actually convert. And again, you can start to spot demographic trends and crucially identify the interests that matter to that audience. And then you can also use it more for sort of prospecting just to learn about a specific audience. So and one example I've got here, it's quite an old example, but it's a favorite of mine, is looking at UK teachers. Uh, so what we did um, is looked at uh, people who, according to Facebook, had identified their, their role as a, being a teacher. And then, as you can see here, we can pull out all sorts of interests based on the pages they like and the things that they engage with on Facebook. So initially, there's no surprises, you know, they, they like subjects like reading and classroom secrets. But as you start to scroll down the list, you can start to see some interesting things. Teacher's favorite food is Marmite, for example. Uh, and as you go further down the list, you start to uh, discover some of maybe their guilty pleasures. Their favorite uh, film is Dirty Dancing and their favorite music is Take That. But that just illustrates the amount of data that you can unearth by using Facebook Insights to analyze your target audience. So those are three of my personal favorite SEO tools. And as I said before, they're all completely free of charge to use. I really hope you find them useful.